the iPhone or any Android phone. Where do you stand in this rivalry? It's a topic that has sparked countless arguments, endless debates, and even broken a few friendships. But why is this debate so intense? And why does it even exist today? Our story begins in the early 2000s. Mobile phones were evolving rapidly and tech enthusiasts were eagerly awaiting the next big thing that was gonna take us from an era where mobile phones looked like this. This isn't the original iPhone, this is in fact the second generation iPhone 3G. And what makes me feel old is that many young enthusiasts now won't even know of a world without smartphones. And phones like this, or something like this, or this just seem like relics from a distant past. And they won't even realize that it hasn't always been Apple versus Android. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. People were blown away. The iPhone was billed as something that wasn't just a phone. It was a pocket-sized computer that could actually do it all. But while Apple was basking in the glow of its innovation, another tech giant was quietly preparing its counterattack. In 2008, Google launched Android, an open source operating system designed to power a variety of devices. And unlike Apple's closed ecosystem, Android was open to all manufacturers, allowing for a diverse range of smartphones with different features and price points. Android's flexibility and customization options quickly gained a loyal following. The stage was now set for an epic battle. The polished premium iPhone version versus the versatile, customizable Android. Even myself, after briefly delving into the world of Apple for the first time with the iPhone 3G, it would be a number of years before I actually ventured back into it. And where was I? Of course, Android. So many phones that I've had from HTC phones to Samsung, I did actually properly immerse myself into the world of customization that is Android. And I have to admit, I did enjoy it. It's important to note that there have been many key moments and features that have added fuel to the fire on both sides of this debate. In 2008, three years after Google acquired Android in 2005, the first Android phone, the HTC Dream, hit the market, offering a physical keyboard and the promise of open source customization. In 2010, Apple unveiled the Retina display with the iPhone 4, boasting high resolution and pixel density, making text and images crisper. 2011, Google introduced voice actions, allowing users to control their phones with voice commands, a precursor to what we now know as the Google Assistant. In 2013, with the iPhone 5S, Apple integrated Touch ID, a fingerprint scanner into the iPhone, enhancing security and convenience. By 2020, both platforms embraced 5G, Android in 2019, promising faster internet speeds and better connectivity. In 2021, Apple introduced app privacy labels, giving users more transparency about app data usage, intensifying this privacy debate that we've been having for the last few years or so. Now, while there have been many other milestones achieved on both both sides, it just goes to show that innovation within companies or within operating systems isn't linear. They generally tend to do things when the time is right for our own hardware and software. But why does this debate still rage on? You're either Apple or Android. A big part of it comes down to brand loyalty and identity. iPhone users often swear by Apple's seamless ecosystem, stylish design, and top-notch security. And on the other hand, Android fans love the freedom to choose from a wide range of devices, customize their experience and enjoy advanced features that sometimes outpace Apple's offerings. Apple has a strong brand identity. When you buy an iPhone, you're buying into the whole ecosystem. MacBooks, iPads, Apple Watches, they all work together seamlessly. But to Android fans, you're often seen or called an Apple sheep just because you like the way your devices work. With Android, you get variety and almost endless customization, whether you want a budget phone or a cutting edge device. There's something for everyone. Despite the differences, there are many who believe that both platforms do actually have their merits. Can we ever just reach a point where everyone just gets along. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Both iPhone and Android have borrowed features from each other over the years. iPhones now support widgets and offer a lot more customization on their phones more than they ever have, while Android phones have improved their security and user experience. But it is not all just about the constant bickering and battling between the two systems. There is an increasing cooperation and interaction between Apple and Android devices. Despite that fierce rivalry, both systems have actually started to work together more closely in recent years, and that gap between the two is starting to become closer than ever. 
It's clear that while Apple and Android will always have their differences, there are many areas where they're starting to work together for the benefit of users. From messaging and apps to cloud services and smart home integration, it's this cooperation that helps make our tech lives smoother and more connected. And what do you think about these collaborative effects? At the end of the day, the iPhone versus Android debate is more than just about the phones themselves. It's about personal preferences, lifestyles, and what we do to value our technology. Well, there will be a time when we can all just get along. Maybe not completely, but I suppose that's okay. After all, doesn't a little friendly competition between manufacturers drive innovation, making tech better for everyone? What's your take on this debate? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.